Okay guys, welcome to part three of the Excel tips and tricks tutorial video series. We're now going to dive into a little bit more advanced uh, formulas and calculations. So let's just dive right in. So right here, I've got just a table that I built really fast. It's basically just a shopping list. Let's pretend that you are going to your local grocery store and you've got to buy some products. You know, you've got to buy eggs, bacon, ham, all these different things. And over here, these are the retail prices. This is what the store is charging for each one of these items. And let's say, you know, you're really lucky and you've got this savings promotion and, they, and the store says, hey, you know, you can have 20% off of every single item that you buy today. Wow, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and use Excel to figure out what your savings will be on each product. So we have the retail price. So how do we do this? It's pretty simple. You just say whatever the retail price is multiplied by 20%, that would be how much actually you're saving, you know, because you're saving 20%, 20% off. So your savings will be equal to, or I'm typing the equal sign, it's equal to this cell multiplied by the 20%. Awesome, we just saved, we're gonna be saving 50%. So how do I calculate this for every single cell? I could just go through and say, okay, this one equals $1.99 multiplied by 20%, press enter, and keep on doing that. That takes a long time to do. So you remember last time, all you had to do is click on the bottom right corner where it makes a cross and copy the formula down. Let's do that this time. Uh-oh, what's all this? stuff what's all this crap you know I don't understand what's happening let's press control Z well one thing I didn't tell you is that whenever you're copying down formulas like this actually what's happening if you look up here in the formula bar see like this cell right here this is actually it says equals b5 times b1 so it's saying okay this cell here b5 multiplied by b1 so whenever you drag it down to the next cell let's look at what happens it now says b6 times b2 so, you know, it was doing its, it was trying to be correct in that it took the retail price at the correct location, but it accidentally moved the, uh, the cell down beneath the 20%. So basically what happened is that it did not grab the 20% because the 20% value was not locked in. Basically, if you want, whenever you drag your formulas down like that, you want to tell Excel, hey, there's certain cells I want to lock in so that you don't actually move you know, automatically move the selection down by default. And uh, I'm not sure what the name is, but basically if you highlight the, uh, let's actually back up, let's delete this and go back here because this one was correct. So it was B5 times B1. So I need to tell Excel, hey, I wanna keep B1 for the entire, you know, list of calculations. So what you do is you highlight the cell in this formula bar up top that you want to be static. I don't want this to move. So I highlight that, hit the F4 button, and now you've got the B1 cell surrounded by these dollar symbols. That means that whenever you drag your uh, formulas down that it will actually be constant and static. It won't move its position, but the retail prices will be incremented so you can just calculate it very easy. Hopefully that makes sense. So when I press enter, you know, it just gave me the same result, 40 cents. So what, watch what happens when I drag this down. So I'm gonna drag it down to the bottom and release, and voila, we've got all of our calculations perfect. And you can see if I click on this last one, for instance, and I click up here, anytime you click a formula and then you click up here in the title bar, it'll actually highlight the colors of the cells that are being used for the calculation. You can see this is B12 times B1, B12 is in blue. So you can see here blue is being you know, the border for cell B12, and green is the border for cell B1 because that's what was used and noticed again, obviously, B1 was used all the way to the bottom since we locked it in with that formula mechanism. So that's pretty cool. So now let's see, what's your cost gonna be? My actual cost will be, okay, it's equal to whatever the retail price is uh, minus the savings. That's how much I'm actually paying. So I pay $1.99. Now this time, if I click up here, it's gonna show which cells are used. I actually want to increment, every time I, you know, copy this cell down with my little trick I want to I don't I don't need to keep anything static I can go ahead and let the you know for the next one down like this I can go ahead and let this one keep on incrementing down because uh, you know every cell that I move down it's going to be a changing variable so I'm okay with just dropping this down there's no issues there so I drop it down and wow boom there's my total cost so when I go to the grocery store how much am I actually going to spend well you can you can say, okay, let's calculate the total. Total, I can say it equals, you know, this plus this plus this. That takes forever, I don't wanna do that. Let's just say equals sum. We're gonna do the sum, and you're gonna open your parentheses, and then you're gonna highlight the cells that you want to sum up. So you see it says D4 colon D12. That's because it's summing up cells D4 through D12. Close parentheses, 
and you're done, $30.07. That's how much you'd actually be spending.